Hey, I'm Scott, the cranky old filmmaker. You know what they say, life's a journey. And when the going gets tough, it's nice to have friends to share it with. And man, have I had my share. From failure to loss, collapse to grief, I've pretty much seen it all. But you know what? I'm still here and I'm not done yet. So grab a front row seat, some popcorn, and you might even need a tissue. And let's cranky it up as we delve into stories about some of life's most challenging moments personally and professionally on the Cranky Old Filmmaker Show podcast. So we're here today with Paul Capsar, who's an APRN with a uh, multidiscipline practice here in Las Vegas. Today we're talking about a difficult subject, uh, harm reduction uh, for people who use too much alcohol and different methods other than just abstinence you can use. So tell us about, a little bit about um, this Sinclair method, the Sinclair method, TSN. What, what is it? Sinclair method is instead of using, making somebody stop drinking altogether, Usually somebody comes to me and says, you know, I think I'm drinking too much alcohol or I have lost my off switch. As soon as I take a drink, I just keep going. And by taking a medication called naltrexone one hour before the first drink of the day and drinking until you're satisfied, it helps you reduce the amount of alcohol that you're drinking overall. And eventually you can make a choice whether you want to keep drinking alcohol or not. But it gives you a lot better control over what you're doing and over your life. Who's this for? To anybody that's to have as a relationship with alcohol that they don't like. And and what does it involve? Basically, it involves you come into the office, you see me, I make sure that you're physically in good shape, that there's no reason for you not to be able to take it. And um, we do some lab work, we do a physical explain to you what it is going on. I refer you to somebody for counseling because when we have concerns like that, there's usually something in our background that we need some assistance with. Few of us are willing to recognize that or to admit it, I guess. Um, And I write the prescriptions, I go to the pharmacy, pick it up, take the pill, one hour before they have their first drink. Oh, so so there's a prescription involved. Tell, Tell me about that. Now, Trexone is a prescription medication. It has been around since the 60s. It actually was developed to block the opiate receptor in the body and assist heroin addicts. Um, They found out as a side effect that people that were on naltrexone didn't drink as much alcohol as they did before. And uh, so they really went through and did all the studies and found out that it really is effective for helping people reduce it. A guy named uh, John David Sinclair, who's a PhD out of fin- Finland, uh, said, you know, we have a neurological extinction in our bodies, and I believe that by taking this pill, it'll help create a pharmacological extinction, and that will help us reduce our interest in alcohol overall. Lots of studies that they've done, you know, the full scientific and all that stuff. The challenge uh, for a lot of providers is the studies were done in another country and it's not well documented. And, you know, who would think you take a pill and you drink and that helps you stop drinking? That doesn't make any empirical sense. <laughs> so it had to be proven by the, by the research. Very few of the folks in the recovery community are actually understand this in Claire Method, and very few people are actually using it for patients. I've been very successful with it, and I'm very happy with the outcomes that we get. Some people will start that way and then decide, you know, maybe I really want to go abstinent, and they'll do that, and they're happy with that. There's some people that start out as Sinclair and continue through Sinclair until you know, they've had a drink in three years because they just don't want it. Um, Why this as opposed to just abstinence and stopping since we're preached to that alcohol is not healthy for you anyways? Now, Scott, if I tell you you can't ever have alcohol again in your life, it's the first thing I do, run to the store and say, I'll show you. Um, and, and then it's just like, oh, I can't ever have alcohol. And, no, that's not how we're wired. We have things that we do, and abstinence, you know, it, it works for about 20, the 12-step stuff, 
seems to have a long-term beneficial effect for about 22% of the people that actually follow a 12-step program. The Sinclair method, by contrast, works for 78% of the people. Again, nothing works for everybody, but the percentages are much bigger. Now, those people that are going to 12-step meetings and it's working for them, great. I'm not saying they should change, but there are for some people, for many people, it doesn't work. And a lot of my patients are people that have been in the 12-step community and decided that it really wasn't working for them. Tell me more about this uh, uh, medication and what is it compared to? What other things are there like it? Is this Narcan? What, 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 you know, what? So Narcan or Naloxone is a drug that we use to pull the opiates off the receptors in an overdose situation. We probably should all have a bottle of Naloxone at home for those people that wander in our lives that are using opiates over more than they should. It is a very short acting. It lasts less than 30 minutes. So you, we use it when I worked in the ER, very dramatic results of somebody coming back from an opiate overdose, but we'd have to redose them every half hour. I don't see people walking around with their Narcan sprayer and squirting themselves every 30 minutes to keep from drinking alcohol. That's not realistic. Its cousin is called naltrexone, and it is a um, similar drug, but it has a longer half-life. So when you take the pill, it sticks around in your body much longer. And in this case, it attaches to the opiate receptor, and then it sticks around. So when the alcohol tries to join the receptor, it doesn't have any place to go. So your body says, oh, I'm full. I don't need this anymore. And as a result, you drink less. The biggest complaints I have from people that I start on it <laughs> is, my beer got warm. I've never had warm beer. I, I don't know what to do with that. And I congratulate them on having a warm beer because it is, in fact, a beautiful thing in the, in the context of what they're trying to do. It all sounds very new agey, but there's statistics to back it up. And what is the what is the Western medical medical community think of this? Is this widely accepted? What and 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 what direction is it moving? It is considered by I mean, even in Finland, it is a Western medicine treatment. It's not a woo woo thing. It is using pharmacological pharmacologically approved medication to change. How the body function. If you have um, pre-diabetes and they put you on metformin, it changes your body and helps you function better. It's essentially the same thing. Different, different uh, arena, but essentially the same thing. Uh, the acceptance currently, uh, many people. <laughs> Many people, even many of my peers, look at me like I've got a screw loose when I tell them that, yeah, we give people a pill and we have them drink and then they reduce their amount of drinking. It is not well known. It is not something that I learned in um, nursing, nursing school or in my nurse practitioner program. And it is not in most professional publications. Tell us a little bit about that, how you came about it and started using it in your practice. Well, bottom line is I'm a science fiction nut. I've been reading since grade school. And I had a patient come in one day and said, I want to use uh, naltrexone bef to, before I drink to, um, to reduce the amount of alcohol. And I'm like, really? I've never heard of that. This was 2010. And uh, she mentioned that Claudia Christian is who is an actor on Babylon 5, and Claudia is, is a very powerful character on the show. And I'm like, okay, well, if Claudia said it, then I'm going to go look and see what it is about. And started looking into it, and it is a legitimate, I believed it was a legitimate process. I did start <laughs> inpatient when the patient came in and had a blood alcohol of zero, I would give them an naltrexone, and it actually shortened their stay in the recovery center. Hmm. And it reduces the 
I call them gimme ones, for lack of a better term for most people. It reduces that cravings that you get. And, it, um, and people feel better faster. What about um, side effects since this is, is a medication? And then what about also the fact that alcohol depletes? Common side effects of naltrexone. Typically your gastrointestinal. You may not be as hungry as you were. You will find that you may be a little constipated. Um, you may not be quite as enthusiastic as you were, a little bit of a depression. But typically people that are drinking more alcohol than they really want to have a degree of depression anyway. So as that depression lifts, whatever the naltrexone causes is muted. It's not a, not a big factor in things. Uh, I've had some people come in and say it caused extreme euphoria. Uh, like I could only take this once because it was okay. Some people, they drink more on it. Uh, and what about that nutrition aspect? Because we're always taught that alcohol pretty much sucks everything out of your system. Alcohol washes primarily the B vitamins out. But typically if you're drinking too much alcohol, which by the way is a gram of alcohol is seven calories versus four for proteins and, and carbohydrates and nine for fats. So if you're drinking a liter of uh, alcohol a day, you're putting about... 7,000 calories. In your and, and the sugar, too. That is the sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyways, so we're eating, we're having too many calories, and we're washing out vitamins, nutrition, and we're not eating any kind of food. So, <laughs> I use something called the Pure Encapsulations Detox Pack. It's a box about this big with 30 days worth of vitamin supplements and uh, pharmaceutical grade vitamins. Uh, the reason I use that is because one of my guys, I got him detoxed and gave him the vitamins. And he calls me up about 30 minutes later and says, Paul, yeah, like, what the hell's in this stuff? I said, vitamins, supplements, nutrition. I haven't felt this good in seven years. <laughs> How could I not give it to everybody now? And, and I find that everybody that I give that vitamin pack to comes back within a couple of days saying, man, I feel so much better with that vitamin pack than I did before. Whereas we need those vitamins, we need those micronutrients, we need those bacteria to be healthy. And we don't do that. And that, that vitamin pack, by doing that, I bring everybody up to a baseline of nutrition that I know they're at a certain level, and then they can build on that. The benefit to that is, of course, we all know that when we're having an alcohol problem and we start craving, it's the alcohol that's causing the problem. My belief is that the nutritional deficits are synergistic to the alcohol craving. And when we take care of these cravings for everything by putting food in, the cravings come down to just the alcohol. And they're much easier to deal with when it's only the alcohol. The other thing that I do with patients, you come in as part of your assessment, it's sleep apnea questionnaire. How are you sleeping? What are you doing? I find that people who have sleep apnea, who don't sleep properly, and sometimes it's just the alcohol, you get them off the alcohol and it straightens out. But sometimes it is the sleep apnea that is kind of driving their drinking because they want to sleep, so they drink. And then they don't sleep because it's even worse. But sometimes people have impulse control issues and they will do things like, oh yeah, I know I shouldn't do this, but eh, oh well. And the impulse is to go take care of it, which of course is more harmful. And you have to take care of whatever their impulse control issues are as well. Sometimes medication, sometimes a counselor can deal with it. I can imagine uh, there's skeptics out there on the whole topic. So what do you say to the skeptics? The, you know, to the obvious person who says, or the obvious so-called expert who says, um, you're, ena you're enabling more than solving. I mean, what, what, are, what are the skeptics that say in that, that you're aware of out there? And what's the response to that? Many of them don't want to hear about 
using a Sinclair method or using multiple alternative methods. And by the way, we also have with um, Susan Wellman in the practice, we're using Chinese medicine for she can help with reduce some of the, the cravings, reduce the sensations of gimme ones. Uh, but you get the, you'll get the skepticism towards the Chinese uh, oh, medicine also. And, so. and that's okay. Yeah. But we use that and we have craniosacral massage with meditation. When you put all those together, it's an entire package. And, you know, what do I think about the skeptics? They're uninformed. And so they're just simply not aware. It takes 27 years from the time a new research study is proven until it's adopted by the medical community. What about intervention? If you have uh, to get involved with a loved one or a friend or family member, well, now this gives you another option to present to them, huh? It is another option. I um, Usually by the time... Because you're talking to somebody who's very resistant at that point, too. So. Right. Um, typically by the time somebody gets to where they have to have an intervention, they are... Uh, they're way behind the power curve and getting using Sinclair method for somebody who's had an intervention is they probably need to get sobered up first and figure out what life is about and then work at a whole plan as to what they do. Those, those are people that initially at least, that, that at minimum, they have to be sobered up. So what's point X where this is a good option for somebody that without them stepping over a red line? Unfortunately, it's fuzzy. There is no there is no perfect line for it. There, I've had some people that they literally walk in the door. They have been drinking heavily for the last three weeks. I uh, haven't, you know, their house is littered with bottles. I haven't taken the naltrexone. You can watch it as they. They go from being in withdrawal and you can watch them settle down. It's like I gave them a benzodiazepine and chill them out. It works quite, it's quite nice. What about somebody, what about people who, it's more than alcohol? The narcotics are involved also or, or <laughs> well, other substances? That's that, a problem. Okay. Because if you are using opiates, uh, and opiates I include, uh, Suboxone is an opiate or Subutex, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, buprenorphine. Um, Kratom is an opiate, acts like an opiate at certain levels, and there's a nootropic called tenazepine um, that actually acts like an opiate at higher doses, and if you're taking naltrexone with any of those things, you're going to hurt, because once you start it, if you take the naltrexone, your body is going to just push all of that opiate off of your receptors into what we call a precipitated withdrawal and you will be absolutely miserable until everything is processed and there's no way of stopping it. So uh, lastly, when's the best time to come to you and look into this if I'm, if I'm concerned about my alcohol usage? Uh, anytime. I mean, if, you're, if it pops into your head that you're drinking more than you really should or that you know, you've got family members that are drinking a lot, have a history of drinking a lot, and you start drinking and go, oh, you know, uh, maybe I shouldn't have that third beer as you're drinking that third beer. Then maybe you need to sit down and we have a gentle conversation. I don't judge anybody. If you're smart enough to come sit in front of me and say, I would like to have some guidance, okay. I don't really care what you've been doing, mostly, <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to berate you because you're doing something. You're you're here. You're asking for help. My job is to assist you the best way I can. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. So Paul Capsar, again, is a multi-practice APRN here in Las Vegas. You can see him or find out more about him and his practice at wellpathways.net online and they're right uh, again as i said in las vegas at sunset and eastern roads and um, hopefully you've taken a look at some of the information we've scrolled behind us about the sinclair method alcohol harm reduction and uh, thank you for joining us today we'll see you again thank you